Good afternoon from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It is July the 5th, just after 7.30 p.m. at our Florida launch site. The SpaceX team is preparing for launch of the Falcon 9 carrying Intelsat 35E in just under seven minutes from historic Launch Complex 39A. Launch is scheduled this evening at 23 hours, 38 minutes universal time, or 7.38 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. I'm John Innsbrucker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer, and I'll be bringing you updates and commentary during today's webcast. Now the good news is the Falcon 9 team working no issues. We're just a little bit more than six minutes to go. Liquid oxygen loading is continuing on both the first and second stages. Fuel loading is completed on both stages. We're currently chilling in the nine Merlin, Merlin engines on the first stage. Now, at T minus 10 seconds, the software does a series of checks to make sure Falcon 9 is good to fly, as you've heard about in our last two launch attempts. Now, on Monday, during the second launch attempt, a first stage measurement in the avionics system did not match the pre programmed limit in the ground database. So the ground software halted the launch. The SpaceX engineers have confirmed the rocket was good and there were no changes required to the flight hardware. We have modified the limit for today's countdown to avoid a possible repeat of the abort. The SpaceX teams also spent the 4th of July conducting an additional review of both the rocket and ground systems, and today we're looking good for launch in just over five minutes from now. Now you may notice the Falcon 9 on the launch pad. You can see the Gox clouds coming off of the vehicle in the close-up of the first stage. There are no landing legs, there are no grid fins. The first stage is expendable on this flight. We won't be covering a return to a drone ship or the launch site. Instead, we'll be focusing on the second stage flight as we go into first a parking orbit with Intelsat 35E and then into the final geostationary transfer orbit. Speaking of Intelsat 35E, the spacecraft team has gone on internal power. They're reporting no issues. Everything's looking good on the spacecraft. For the range, both the Air Force and Kennedy Space Center are supporting today. They are ready to go. The airspace and the sea space is clear, working no issues. And finally on the weather, it's great looking weather today. Blue skies, the sea breeze has kept the thunderstorms inland. So both the ground level winds are looking good. The upper altitude winds and clouds are also excellent for launch. Now coming up on T minus four minutes, coming up and counting down, next major activities. We are opening up the strong back. We'll recline that slightly away from the Falcon 9. We move it a degree and a half away back, and then we will see it move the rest of the way at liftoff. Another major activity you're going to hear at T minus one minute is the call out of flight computers and startup. That means the Falcon flight computers, the ground computers are in automated control of the vehicle. They'll do the last checks, including those T minus 10 second checks, light the engines, make sure we're at full power, and then the Falcon 9 will be commanding the ground system to release it, and away we go. So we're going to listen with the rest of you in the last three and a half minutes as we count down Falcon 9 carrying Intelsat 35E to geostationary transfer orbit. MVAC announced S2 TVC motion nominal. Stage 2 TVC motion is nominal. Logo bleed verification. And stage 1 locks closed out. Stage two return manifold secured. Strombeck lower has ended. Strombeck is at 88.5 degrees.
Stage two locks closed out. Falcon 9 is on internal power. A1D fuel bleed complete. Vehicles in self line. Ground gas close house has started. Stage one, stage two, crowd healing secured. FTS announced AFTS is ready for launch. AFTS is ready for launch. Gas close is complete. VC verify F9 in startup. Falcon 9's in startup. Stage 1, stage 2, pressing for flight. LD verify go for launch. Go for launch. T minus 30. T minus 20. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T minus 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Vehicle is pitching down range. Plus 50 seconds into flight, you heard the call out on countdown net one. Avionics is nominal. Earlier, we heard propulsion call out a nominal call for the nine Merlin 1D engines. Next major activity coming up in just over 15 Falcon seconds. Maximum dynamic pressure. Falcon 9 currently has gone supersonic. Vehicle is experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. T plus one minute, 30 seconds into flight. We've heard the call out. The vehicle has gone through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. That's where the velocity of the vehicle and the density of the lower altitude of the Earth's atmosphere combine to create the greatest loads on the Falcon 9. The Merlin engines throttled down and then throttled back up to full power in preparation going through this phase. So currently we're at full power, continuing to head towards stage separation, coming up at about 2 plus, two, plus two minutes, 46 seconds. Now there will be a sequence of activities that happen very rapidly in just about 35 seconds from now. You'll hear Miko, main engine cut off, the nine Merlin first stage engines will shut down, Four seconds later, we get stage separation. Seven seconds after that, the upper stage engine ignites to propel the second stage and Intelsat into the parking orbit. Let's watch and listen as we come up on Miko and stage separation. Amigo. 
T plus three minutes, five seconds. You hear the applause in the background here in Hawthorne. A successful shutdown, stage separation, and ignition of the upper stage engine. The next major activity coming up in about 20 seconds, 25 seconds, is fairing separation. We'll watch for that as the camera switches to a forward view showing Intelsat 35E inside the payload fairing. Fairing separation confirmed. Second stage is following normal trajectory. Coming up on T plus four minutes into flight, Bermuda, we saw a successful signal. separation of the payload fairing. Intelsat 35E attached to the top of the second stage, now exposed to the vacuum of outer space. We've also heard the call out that propulsion continues to be normal. Trajectory looks good for the Falcon 9. T plus five minutes into flight. Trajectory continues to look good. Propulsion on the second stage engine continues to look good. Everything going well on the flight of Falcon 9 carrying Intelsat 35E. As a reminder, for recoverable first stage flights, we typically might have seen the boost back burn. We'd be getting for, ready for the entry burn. On this mission, the first stage was not recoverable, did not have landing legs or grid fins, so we're not following the first stage. We're going to stay with the second stage as it powers its way into orbit with shutdown of the upper stage engine planned at about T plus 8 minutes and 40 seconds. That'll be the first, uh, first shutdown of the upper stage engine. There is a second burn planned later on as we pass over Africa. We'll be bringing that to you and we'll talk about that a little bit later more. Currently coming up on T plus 6 minutes. Everything continues to go well for Falcon 9 carrying Intelsat 35E. Just a little bit more than two and a half minutes remaining in this first of two planned burns of the upper stage engine. Stage continuing to follow nominal trajectory. T plus seven minutes into flight. Conditions continue to remain nominal on the flight of Falcon 9. Watching the second stage continuing to head east from Kennedy Space Center, going into the first of two planned orbits, in this case, a low Earth parking orbit. Planned shutdown of the upper stage engine is coming up in about a minute and 14 seconds from now.
We're coming up about 30 seconds from shutdown. This will be called Seco One, second, second stage, stage engine yeah, cutoff yeah, number one. At the completion of the burn, we'll wait for the guidance navigation control engineering team to let us know how the orbit looks. We have Seco. And there you've heard it. We've had shutdown of the second stage engine right on time. Also looking at the GNC trajectory data. Good orbital insertion. And there we hear also over countdown net, the GNC engineer GNC confirms a good nominal insertion orbit. So this is the end of the first of two burns of the upper stage engine. We're going now into a coast phase. We'll leave you with an animation of the orbit. Our next engine burn on the second stage is planned at just before 26 and a half minutes into flight. We will cover that burn. I'll be back with commentary at T plus 25 minutes. But for now, we're going to have animation of the second stage flight path carrying Intelsat 35E on our way to Africa where we prepare for the second burn as we pass over the equator. We'll be back with you at T plus 25 minutes.
Jacob Bowen, an acquisition of Signal. Welcome back to the SpaceX webcast of the launch of Intelsat 35E on the Falcon 9. We're at T plus 25 minutes, 30 seconds. We're coming up in about one minute for restart of the upper stage engine. Now the purpose of this burn is to transfer us from the low earth parking orbit into the geostationary transfer orbit. The burn will last about a minute and we've got the view right now as we're passing over Africa from the Gabon ground station, getting telemetry and video transferred down to us, saying we'll have that for you as long as the link holds on the webcast. So with that coming up, T plus 26 minutes, let's listen to the burn of the upper stage engine, the second of the two planned burns for today. We've got ignition of the upper stage engine, hearing reports that turbine temperatures look good, propulsion looks good, chamber pressures are good. We're underway for a burn that'll last just about 60 seconds. Now, as you can see by the velocity gauge, we started the burn at just under seven and a half kilometers per second orbital velocity. This burn with a 210,000 pound thrust Merlin vacuum engine will bring us up to almost 10 kilometers per second. The acceleration will be just over 5 G's, and as we burn off propellant, we will be throttling down. We're waiting now for shutdown, and then we'll wait to hear how the orbit looks. GNC confirms good orbit for payload deploy. And there you have it. We waited a minute. GNC has confirmed a good orbit for spacecraft deployment. So we did the one minute roughly burn of the upper stage engine. That went well. Shut down. Took a minute. GNC took a chance. Went through the data. Came up with the orbit. Announced we have a good orbit. We're right where we want to be for our Intelsat 35E spacecraft customer. We're going to pause here for a few minutes. The next major event is going to be spacecraft deployment at T plus 32 minutes. Uh, not much to show right now. So we'll come back at T plus 31 minutes and walk you through the last major activity in today's mission.
Acquisition and Signal, HPK. T plus 31 minutes since the launch of Falcon 9 carrying Intelsat 35E. We're waiting for the last major activity of the primary mission, and that is deployment of the Intelsat 35E spacecraft. It's currently attached to a payload attach fitting on top of the second stage. At about T plus 32 minutes into flight, the Falcon 9 flight computer sends the signals that activate the separation system. Small springs then push the Intelsat spacecraft away from Falcon 9 into the desired transfer orbit. With 30 seconds away, we've got contact over the African ground station heart of Vistok. We're getting the expectation of a view from the payload camera looking forward. And right now we're waiting with everybody for payload separation. Right on time, we had spacecraft deployment, Intelsat 35E, free of the Falcon 9, on its way in the desired geostationary transfer orbit. Video is a little broken up there, but we did hear the call out of deployment, and we did see it on the camera. So that's going to bring an end to our webcast. We counted down. Third try today was the charm. We got through the countdown, launched right on time. The weather cooperated. First stage, an expendable first stage, did its job well. Second stage went through the two desired burns, each time putting us into the desired orbit. And then finally, just now, as you saw, spacecraft separation on time, right where we wanted to be. So we'd like to thank, of course, our Intelsat customer. We'd like to thank NASA and the Air Force for range support, especially in deferring some of the downtime planned today so that SpaceX could have a launch attempt here on the 5th of July. And of course, the Federal Aviation Administration, our licensing agency in the US government. Now we invite you to follow us on our Twitter feed, as well as Instagram and our website at SpaceX.com for updates and pictures of the flight. We'd like to thank you for letting us share the mission of Falcon 9 with you. And until the next webcast, goodbye.